Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem squares of a sorted array. And even though this is an easy problem, it's a little bit tricky for an easy problem, but I do think it's an interesting one. It's not impossibly difficult. We're given an integer array of nums sorted in non-decreasing order. What they mean by that is basically it's, it's uh, sorted in increasing order. It's just that there might be some values that are equal, right? So if I gave you one, two, two, three, this is sorted in non-decreasing order. We don't say it's sorted in increasing order because some of the values could be equal. I think that's what they mean by that. But in case it's confusing to you, it's not as confusing as it might sound. And we're actually wanting to return an array of the squares of each of these numbers that were given. But the only thing is that the squares of them also have to be sorted in non-decreasing order. So you first might think, well, why not just take the square of each number and leave it as it is? But take a look at this first example. If we do that, we get this array. And the reason is because we have some negative numbers in our array and we also have some positive numbers. So then when you do it, you square those numbers, the array is not left as it's sorted, right? It's not still sorted. So it still has to be modified before we can actually return it because this is what we're trying to return, like the actual sorted array, but this is not what we want. So how can we solve this problem? Well, you might just kind of ignore the whole fact that the input array is sorted in the first place. You might just take the squares of each number and then sort the array, you know, just run a sorting algorithm on it, right? The time complexity of that though is going to be n log n because that's what sorting takes. So the question is, can we do better, right? Why would they even give us this sorted property if we couldn't leverage it somehow? And the answer is we can leverage it, but it's a little bit tricky but not impossible. So let's take a look at the same array below. One thing to notice here is that squaring a negative number uh, like negative one is the same exact as squaring a positive one value, right? If it existed in this array, right? Squaring a negative four is the same as squaring a positive four. They both equal 16, but the negative numbers are gonna be on the left side of the array and the positives are gonna be on the right side of the array if there even are negative numbers in the first place, right? Maybe we have all positives. In that case, the problem would be pretty easy. But let's assume we do have some negatives and some positives. We're trying to build a sorted output, right? By taking the squares of each of these numbers. Well, which one of these is gonna go first in our sorted array? Well, the smallest number we could have in our output array is gonna be zero because any number that's squared that's non-zero is going to be non-zero, right? It's gonna be a positive number, but zero is gonna stay zero. So zero can go, if there is a zero value in the input array, we can find it and then in our result, we can put zero as the first value. But then the question becomes, which value is gonna go next? Right, what's the next smallest value? Well, they must be adjacent to the zero, right? It couldn't be a 10 all the way on the right side. That's a very positive number. And it couldn't be the negative four all the way on the left side. That's a very negative number, right? The absolute value of it is pretty large. But we can look at the two adjacent values to the zero, right? the negative one or the three. Which one, of the, which one of these numbers squared is gonna go in the next spot? Well, we can basically just take the absolute value of negative one, it's gonna be positive one. The absolute value of this, it's gonna be positive three. Which one of these is smaller? Of course, the one, right? So the, the square value of the one is gonna be smaller. It's gonna be exactly one. So uh, we can put a one in the output. Right, and, and what you might be noticing now is that we're kind of doing a two-pointer approach, right? We found the smallest value, which in this case was the zero, and now we have two pointers, a right pointer and a left pointer, and we're basically comparing the values here, which one of these is smaller, uh, and then we're putting, we're inserting that value into our array and then shifting the pointers accordingly. Uh, this is perfectly fine, and this actually will work. The time complexity of this is gonna be big O of N, and the memory complexity is kind of gonna be big O of one or big O of N, depending on whether you count the output array as extra memory or not, uh, but, I just wanna mention that the, the coding this up is gonna be a little bit more annoying. There's a slightly easier way to code this up and that is by actually initializing our uh, left and right pointers 
all the way at the left side and all the way at the right side. The way we were initially trying to build our result, our output array, was basically find the smallest number, then find the next smallest and the next smallest. How about we actually build it in reverse order? We find the largest value and then the next largest and then the next largest. Uh, doing it this way is just a little bit easier to code up because we can initialize our left and right pointers all the way at the edges of the array and just compare these two values. Which one of these squared is going to be larger? 10 squared is larger than 4 squared. So therefore, we're going to take 10 squared and put it all the way at the right side of the array. That's going to be 100. And then we're going to shift our right pointer over here, right? We don't look at this anymore. Now, what's the next largest? It's going to be 4 squared or negative 4 squared rather than 3 squared. So we can take uh, a le left pointer, shift it over here, cross this out. A negative 4 squared is 16, so we can add that to our output, right? As you can see, we're building this in reverse order, and I'll just quickly finish this. Next, it's going to be 3, then we'll have a 9 here, uh, but then our right pointer will be here. Between these two, it's going to be this. Um, one negative one squared. So we're going to shift our left pointer again, and our one squared is going to be added to the array. Now we have one le a last value. Our left and right pointers are both at the same value. It's zero. A zero squared is still zero. So that's going to be the output. And at this point, our left pointer will actually have crossed our right pointer. And that's how you know you can stop the algorithm, right? We've gone through every single value in the array, and we have our result. And as you can see, we did uh, build it in one pass through the input array. So we did do this in big O of n time. So with that in mind, let's actually jump into the code. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is just initialize our result to be an empty array. And like I said, we're going to be building this in reverse order. So we're going to be appending to this array. And then at the end, what we're going to do is just take the uh, array and then reverse it before we return it. So in Python, you can do that just like this. But just keep in mind, this is basically reverse the array. So we're going to have our left and right pointers initialized to the beginning of the array and to the end of the array. So length of nums minus one. Uh, and then we're going to just do our two pointer algorithm while the pointers have not crossed each other. So while left is less than or equal to the right pointer. Only thing we need to check is which one of them is smaller so uh, or greater, right? So if the left number squared is larger than the right number squared, then we will go ahead and add that number, add the left number to the array, right? So, or the square of that number. So the left number uh, squared is larger than the right number squared. So let's add the left number squared. And the else case is just gonna be the exact opposite. Uh, we're going to be adding the right number squared, right? So if they were equal, we'd probably execute the right, uh, the, the else case, but it doesn't really matter if they were equal. That's the entire algorithm pretty much, but don't forget to update your pointer. So if we added the left value, then we want to increment our left pointer. And if we added the right value, we want to decrement the right pointer. And that's the whole algorithm. We made sure to reverse the result before we returned it, because as you can see, the way we're building it right now is basically in reverse order. We're putting the largest value first, then the next largest, then the next largest. So we want to make sure to uh, reverse the array. But let's run the code to make sure that it does work. And as you can see on the left, yes, it does work. And it's about as efficient as you can get for this problem. So I really hope that this was helpful. If it was, please like and subscribe. It really supports the channel a lot. Consider checking out my Patreon where you can further support the channel. And hopefully I'll see you pretty soon. Thanks for watching.